I'm so tired, don't wanna feel it. Because when I was writing this record, I was writing from a place where I was writing it to myself. Mm-hmm. Like I, my, it seemed like life had stopped for me. And you know, I say things like thought they thought they put my life on hold. And my life was on hold. My career was on hold. Everything was on hold because I was living a life that was de- deceiving. I, I thought I was w- with someone that I knew, and I wasn't. Mm-hmm. So my life was on hold. So I was. You'd think because she's one of the biggest stars in the music and television world, that was an exaggeration. But it seems Diddy might have done quite a number on her. He became someone that I didn't know mm-hmm. due to greed, lust, power. I gave him way too much i gave him so much power i gave him while blige seems to hold the perspective that he changed at some point another one of his former artists says that's kind of who he's always been selfish he's a very selfish individual he wants the spotlight on him he wants to be a rapper so really he's a rapper and not the entertainment industry is the home of making big banks but the lives of some of our favorite stars aren't always what we assume them to be Take Mary J. Blige for starters. She is the tough matriarchal figure in power, and because of that, several people view her from that angle. But the reality is a different story. Although she's doing much better right now, it seems her past might have been one hell of a roller coaster ride. Some might know, but now she seems to be using Diddy's recent predicament to relay the message louder. Now, beef is common in the industry, just as Drake and Kendrick Lamar currently seem to be engrossed. And just like their battle being with cryptic music lines, Blige seems to be using cryptic IG lines. Anyone from the 90s probably knows that Blige and Diddy go way back. In fact, you could even say she owes a large percentage of the notoriety she has today to Diddy giving her a platform to shoot off from years back. It's decades later, and we're starting to discover that giving her that platform might have come at a steep price she stayed silent about for years. Of course, anyone who's been remotely following the reports that have been getting out about Diddy probably knows this is the norm for him, as most of the artists who worked with him in the past have told a similar story. However, it appears Blige even had it worse than the others. In her case, it seems she didn't just get ripped off again, as is the alleged norm with Diddy but she may have seen things that confirm the allegations currently being brought to the rap mogul's doorstep. His former bodyguards have hinted at it, rappers he signed in the past have outrightly confirmed it, and now it seems Blige might be the newest member in the exposing Diddy in real-time showdown. Blige's fight goes beyond just her experiences with Diddy. The rapper cum actress has also made allegations hinting at how Diddy might have played a role in some other unanswered crimes in the industry, specifically that of Alia. Know that that was a murder. You know what I'm saying? I was a spiritual murder, whether people know it or not, because it killed people. You know what I'm saying? Whether people know it or not. And um, I could go deep, but a lot of people, I would have to really. If you ask me, all of this might be enough reason to gloat about karma finally catching up to the rap executive. But take it from her and her long, tumultuous history with the man. I'm actually sitting here talking to Mary. She's sitting on the couch and shit, and we ordered some food and some old drinks. And somebody knocked on the window, knocked on the door. She ran and kind of damn near jumped behind the couch hiding. By now, you've probably heard that Diddy might be in some trouble. I know it's getting a little mundane at this point because the rapper is almost always in trouble, but it seems this might be the worst he's had it in a while. The reason this is so telling right now is that other people in the industry are starting to step into the conversation. What's more is that, unlike the norm, these people aren't stepping into this conversation directly. They seem to just be firing shots. Case in point, two women who were associated with Diddy during the prime of their careers, Fythe Vank and Mary J. Bleagy, are appearing to gloat over Diddy's latest legal issues. Media takeout confirms that Diddy's Uptown Records label, mate Mary J. Blige, and his former bad boy entertainment artist, Faith Evans, shared some very telling posts as Diddy's drama with the feds unfolded in real time. Faith Evans shared a picture of herself laughing hysterically. Many fans thought it was a little odd because it seemed out of character for her. But while her post could be written off as having nothing to do with Diddy's situation, Blige's own can't be dismissed so easily. 
The singer shared a quote about boundaries and not being the person she used to be. It read, Unfortunately, a lot of you met me when I lacked boundaries and was a people pleaser. Let me reintroduce myself. I burn bridges as needed. You might not be able to tell, but that post was anything but a random announcement of reinventing herself for the world. See, before becoming the force she is right now, Blige had to fight tooth and nail. And do you know who sat at the helm of the problems she was facing in the industry? The man of the hour himself, Sean Diddy Combs. Mary J. Blige is one of the most successful and influential R&B singers of all time, but her relationship with her former mentor and producer Diddy has been shrouded in mystery for years. Now, shocking revelations are saying Diddy betrayed her trust and exploited her talent. In an interview with Rolling Stone, Blige reportedly hinted that Diddy, who oversaw her first two albums, What's the 411 and My Life, was not only unkind to her when they were involved, but also took credit for her work and manipulated her into signing unfavorable contracts. It seems that Diddy, who was then known as Puff Daddy, seduced her with his charm and charisma when she was a young and naive artist. She alluded to him promising to make her a star and protect her from the dangers of the music industry, but instead, it seems he used her as a cash cow among several other allegations. The things that Blige seems to have suffered at the hands of Diddy aren't news to anyone who's been closely behind the stories attached to Diddy's name. The entire reason these women can gloat about his recent L is because other women from his past have spoken up. Like Cassie, who filed a lawsuit stating she was constantly attacked by the rapper and forced to live life as less than human. Several other people, women and men, have also told a similar story. According to the reports, those stories have now put Diddy in a complicated position with the authorities. Speaking of, Combs has been spotted in Miami amid raids on his homes in Los Angeles and Miami by federal agents, reports TMZ. About 30 different law enforcement calls at least. There are three Bearcats on. In the footage obtained by the outlet, the music mogul appeared to be pacing around freely with a cell phone in hand on Monday afternoon around 3 p.m local time at the Miami Opelika Executive Airport. Combs' appearance at the Miami airport follows a report that his private jet landed in Antigua on Monday. The rapper's arrival in Miami follows the home raid of both his Miami home and Los Angeles homes amid ST allegations filed in two prior lawsuits. Per reports, on Monday afternoon, Combs' Los Angeles and Miami properties were raided by federal agents. TMZ first reported that federal agents arrived at the rapper's L.A. home with helicopters above the property. Earlier today, Homeland Security Investigations, HSI, New York, executed law enforcement actions as part of an ongoing investigation with assistance from HSI Los Angeles, HSI Miami, and our local law enforcement partners. We will provide further information as it becomes available, a Homeland Security Investigations representative said in a statement to People. We will always support law enforcement when it seeks to prosecute those that have violated the law. Hopefully, this is the beginning of a process that will hold Mr. Combs responsible for his depraved conduct, Douglas Wigdor, attorney for Cassie and Jane Doe, who each previously filed lawsuits against Combs, told People in a statement. Local affiliate Fox 11 showed aerial footage of Combs' two sons, Justin Combs and Christian King. Combs handcuffed outside their Beverly Hills home and speaking with authorities. About 30 different law enforcement calls at least. There are three Bearcats on. Trouble doesn't get more profound than this when you have a messy past. This seems to be why Evans and Blige might have been firing shots at the rapper. That's a big deal because only a couple of years back, these women allegedly couldn't stand each other, and once again, Diddy was at the center of it all. The alleged feud between the two iconic stars has caused quite a stir on social media, further fueling the controversy surrounding Mary J. Blige, Faith Evans, and Puffy Daddy. What's wrong with that? We met each other, Puff hooked us up, yeah. he wanted me to help co-write on the album. You know, she was singing for years before I met her, so... Rumors have indeed circulated, suggesting that Mary J. Blige harbors animosity toward Faith Evans. These rumors allegedly claim that Mary sought revenge against Faith at Diddy's party. What's astonishing is that these rumors appear to have some basis in reality, given their long history dating back to the 1990s. Mary J. Blige and Faith Evans initially began their relationship as close friends. 
They started working together in the early 90s when Diddy signed Faith to his record label, Bad Boy Entertainment, and it's crazy to see how things have changed since then. Mary had this one-of-a-kind approach that mixed hip-hop and R&B like no one else. Her style was edgy, and her music had a raw, unapologetic quality. She didn't hold back with her lyrics and subject matter. When she entered the music scene, she brought a whole new level of energy that was truly unique. She yeah. just, yeah. She, she's herself, and nobody influences that. Right. You know, nobody at That's all. Right. Not career, not the higher person, nobody, and I really respect her. Many people were stunned to know that Mary J. Blige and Faith Evans had a great bond. In Faith Evans' album, Marriage Obliges In My Life, she had Mary J. Blige sang all the background vocals. They were really tight back then, and there are pictures on the internet showing them hanging out, having a good time, and maybe even enjoying some drinks and smokes. Now, Mary J. Blige was a successful R&B singer. In the music industry, there's a common trend where if one artist becomes successful, the industry rushes to create its own version of that artist. It's all about making money, and labels are all about business. But you can imagine how frustrating this can be for the original artist. For instance, talk about Faith Evans. While she's different from Mary J. Blige in many ways, she was packaged and promoted in a similar way to Mary. Mary was signed to Uptown Records, and at the time, P. Diddy was also on the label. He helped produce Mary's first two albums. However, there was a falling out between Diddy and Mary, leading him to start his own label, Bad Boy Records. Here's where it gets tricky. Diddy introduced Faith Evans, an R&B singer, and made her follow Mary's exact blueprint for success. You can imagine that this didn't sit well with Mary, even though she and Faith initially got along and even collaborated on a few songs. Things got tense because they ended up in direct competition with each other, all thanks to the industry's desire to replicate success. Faith even released a song on her album called Love Don't Live Here Anymore, a Rolls Royce remix. But guess what? You can hardly find that song anywhere because, according to Faith, Mary's vocals were taken off the album. Something definitely went down between them because if you try to buy Faith Evans' first album, Marriage Obliges, you won't find that song on it anywhere. Faith said, at the time, the general manager of Bad Boy called me like six months after my album came out like, Mary wants her voice off your album, so I just re-recorded the record, which I hated without her on it. Me on my first album, we okay. did a song together um, called Love Don't Live Here Anymore. Wow. And then at the time, the general manager of Bad Boy called me like probably about six months after my album came out like, Mary wants a voice off your album. However, Mary had a different perspective on the whole situation. Mary said, that's not true. That's something I'm just hearing about, responded Blige. I love that song. I love the duet that we did. And every time I hear it, I'm like, well, what happened to my part? She further added, I know I didn't say anything about it. They lied to her. Time. Was Faith a little bit of a takeoff of what, of what, of how you were moving? Of course. But I always wanted to know what you thought. I, I knew it from the outside. If you knew it from the outside, you know I knew it from the inside. Yeah, I, right? I, I... Besides the fact that these women were working with him at a time when several people have alleged he was a monster and probably saw it for themselves, the timeline of their feud proves that the record producer may have pitted them against each other intentionally. Historically, this isn't something most people would put past Diddy, and that would explain them coming out to troll him for his recent media loss. According to fans, it seems Diddy may actually still have his claws sunk into her, even with all the stories going around. One person wrote, y'all looking for Mary J. Blige to say something. Meanwhile, she too busy working. Diddy been having her busy working off her debt since the divorce. She tried hell. This would explain how cryptic her message was, wouldn't it? Tell us in the comments. That's it. Good B.